Love this podcast? Support this show through the ACAST supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give, and there's no regular commitment. Just click the link in the show description to support now. What is surprising is the amount of leaks that go unreported. Uh, During these walks, we always find unreported leaks, but typically what's happening is the like a toilet for example right if you walk into a toilet uh walk into the bathroom and you see the toilet it may not be making a lot of noise you can visually see it leaking right and if it is making noise you can hear that little drip uh some units like whenever you turn off the turn on the light it automatically turns on the fan so you actually don't have that ability to hear any leaks taking place in the unit because the fan is blowing so these are things that i I really paid attention to welcome to the show you are listening to the real estate lab podcast in this lab we decode the stories secrets and skills of the most brilliant minds in real estate investing then turn their wisdom into practical advice and knowledge that we can use to boost our income and now, let's turn it over to our host, V. It's a great day to be alive and to invest in real estate. How are you doing, lab mate? I'm thrilled to have you here with us this week. I appreciate you a lot for letting me share my podcast, my guests' messages through your earballs. We are going to talk about a weird subject this week. We're going to make number two great again. Now, what do I mean by that? You heard me. We are going to talk about this stinking subject and how your number two, or rather your resident number two, could be your number one money-making machine. Are you interested now? Or maybe I gross you out. Not sure yet, but in a moment, I will share with you exactly how we can do that. Now, before I get down to business, I would like to share an excellent, excellent resource with you. It's a free book from my good friend, Chris Prefontaine. The book is called The New Rules of Real Estate Investing. Now, Chris and his team will actually send you a physical copy for free. You don't even have to pay shipping. Chris's and his team will sign the book, send it to you for free. All you have to do is go to links.realestatelab.live slash Chris to get it. Now, also, when you get a chance, it would mean the world to me if you could head on over to iTunes, write a review, subscribe to the show, and give the show a five-star rating. That's the only way I can grow the show. Or you could head on over to links.realestatelab.live slash review to do that as well. Now, one last thing before we get rolling. I am going to transition my content to a new website that's being built right now by my good friend Darren Peel of Hey Healthy Media. I cannot wait to share that with you when it's live. All right, great. Now that I've covered all of the housekeeping stuff, let me share with you about my guests for today's show. Our guests today are specialists in the area of water conservation. They help multifamily owners reduce water and sewer expenses up to 40%. Now you might be thinking, hey V, come on man. My tenants, my residents are paying for utilities. So why even bother talking about this? Well, I had the same questions and my guess is water conservation experts from SAS Conserve are going to share with us the reason why. And they are Anselmo Torres III and Kelly Stinson, the self-proclaimed hashtag the potty princess. They are going to share all aspects about saving money, saving water in today's episode. Now let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Lab Podcast. My name is V Koo and 
We are thrilled to have two special guests from SAS here with us. Uh, Anselmo Torres the third national account manager and Kelly Stinson national sales manager welcome to the show guys thank you for having us yes and thank you for having us this afternoon well let me get this right out of the gate for you Kelly um, the potty princess and, and we'll get to that name in, in a minute here in your household who's doing most of the yelling when OUK <laughs> I love that question. Um, so uh, I am typically because I'm freaking out. Um, OSU has certainly come a long way um, in their football program. So I'm the Sooner. My husband is the the cowboy. Um, and here's the other thing. Um, my girls are OSU fans. So I I am oh. a lone Sooner. I, can, I can't even dress my dog in Sooner gear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so you have a lot of orange color in your, in your we house? We do. I guess? Unfortunately, orange kind of takes precedence throughout. So um, I imagine as, as I get back into our offices or back out into the field, I'll be sporting my, my crimson again. <laughs> <laughs> Now, back to your potty princess nickname. Someone assigned you this nickname at a networking event, yeah. right? Why did you decide to use it? <laughs> so I get this question asked a lot um, because nobody really wants to be known as the potty princess, right? But it it was a joke um, because we're in the world of water conservation uh, relative to toilets and shower heads and aerators. And when we were at this Texas Apartment Association, um, one of my colleagues and it had introduced me to another operator as, hey, you need to meet the potty princess. And, um, and then it just kind of scaled from there. You know, the multifamily channel is a very small networked group. And then I was at another event a couple months later and they're like, Hey, didn't I meet you back in San Antonio? And then they're like, you're the potty princess. I don't remember your name, but it's the potty princess. I'm like, yes, that is correct. And so it just kind of layered from there. And at the end of the day, what I recognized coming out of this was you may not remember my name and I'm OK with that, but you will remember the potty princess and water conservation and tie that to toilets. And that hits the exact platform and where my passion sustains from is around delivering water conservation and improving cash flow. So I'll own it. It's OK. It's catchy. Um, and. Um, a lot of people chuckle, right? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Is there a, a queen of number two in your network? <laughs> so I recently uh, was introduced to... Um, a lady, her name is Kaylee, Kaylee McMahon. She is known as the apartment queen. So she, uh, she's a big uh, owner investor. And uh, I, that is the only queen that I have met so far. And I am looking uh, for somebody that uh, might be able to take the queen of commodes uh, <laughs> title. <laughs> Man, now back to you, uh, Anselmo. Now, once in a while, I like to ask my guests, you know, if you could sit at a park bench with your most favorite person, you know, who would that be and what would you talk about? But for you, when you sat on a park bench with your dad under the Eiffel Tower, what did you talk about? Wow, how did you know that? That's, uh, you, you definitely do your research. I like that. <laughs> I have Good. to. Uh, so, yes, me and my dad did take, did take a picture on a park bench in the Eiffel Tower a year, almost a year ago. The cool thing was my sister and her husband took a picture at that same exact bench. We had no idea. And when we started looking at the pictures, we realized it was the same exact bench that we both of us took pictures at at the same at, at different times. And then my brother and her husband, uh, or I'm sorry, my brother and his wife went and took a picture at that same bench. So it's kind of interesting that we've all taken a picture at that same bench in front of the Eiffel Tower. Cool story. But to, to answer your question, I think Steve Jobs. I would love to sit down with Steve Jobs and, and uh, kind of pick his brain and even somebody like an Elon Musk. 
just innovators, mm-hmm. people that are going to challenge the status quo and and uh, innovate, look for different ways to do things. That's awesome. Let me switch gear and we'll, we'll go into what we're talking today about water conservation. That's, that's what your uh, company does. Can you give us like a 30,000 foot view about the water conservation study? What's it about? Sure. So SAS is a nationwide service provider. We focus on water conservation through the installation of ultra high efficiency plumbing fixtures in the multifamily channel. Um, Those fixtures are gonna be related to the toilets, the shower heads and the aerators. And why this is important is that it's able to reduce by implementing this type of project, you're able to reduce the water and sewer bill anywhere between 20 to 40%. So if you take like a sample property that, you know, let's say is like a 200 unit property and um, you're going to reduce the water sewer on average of $50,000 in year one, and then you go to reposition that property in three to five years at a six and a half cap rate, because you implemented this project you're actually boosting the asset value by almost $770,000 at the time of turn. But then in addition, you have saved over, you know, over that first year, $50,000. So this is real cash back into owners, uh, NOI, back into the investors' pockets to, you know, improve that asset value. And that's if you did nothing else on the property, right, Kelly? I mean, if you just yes. did water conservation, you'd have that $770,000 asset value boost. Yep, exactly, exactly. What are some of the things that your team would do in a water conservation study? So when our crews uh, come out for an assessment, we will access 100% of the units. And this is what really differentiates SAS from some of our other friends in the industry um, who do water studies. We're actually entering each of those units and we're documenting the flow rate, the fixture flow rate of each of the shower heads, the bathroom faucets, the kitchen faucet, And we're also documenting the gallons per flush on the toilets. So that way we're giving a much more articulated proposal as to what type of consumption and what type of inefficiencies are occurring on the property and then model that into a a true uh, delivery of what they can expect in reduction on consumption and how that will benefit NOI uh, on the financials. But then we take it another layer, and we also document any front of the wall leaks. Because if you go in and you update all these fixtures, and you put in new toilets, and you put in new shower heads, but you're not addressing those front of the wall leaks, you are leaving opportunity there. So as a water conservation organization, and our mission is to preserve the world's most precious resource, it is our, it's our due diligence to provide that information back to the owners so that they can shore those leaks. And Anselmo could speak to some of the leaks that we see um, that might be, you know, helpful for some of our listeners today. Yeah, and Selmo, could you share some of the most common leaks that you see in front of the wall or inside of you? Yes, absolutely. So the uh, I, I have a unique experience. I've actually walked over 30,000 units, uh, probably close to 300 properties over the last four years. So I tend to believe I've seen it all. And I guarantee you, you can put me on a property tomorrow and I've, <laughs> I'll probably see something I've never seen before. So <laughs> yeah. yeah what what is surprising is the amount of leaks that go unreported uh, during these walks we always find unreported leaks but typically what's happening is the like a toilet for example 
right? If you walk into a toilet, uh, walk into the bathroom and you see the toilet, it may not be making a lot of noise. You can visually see it leaking, right? And if it is making noise, you can hear that little drip. Uh, some units, like whenever you turn off the turn on the light, it automatically turns on the fan. So you actually don't have that ability to hear any leaks taking mm -hmm. place in the mm -hmm. unit because the fan is blowing. So these are things that I, I really paid attention to was uh, toilets were always leaking. The other thing was a tub diverter. Uh, whenever you're going to engage the shower head, or even if the shower is off and that tub diverter doesn't isn't sealed correctly and that water is just steadily dripping and leaking, between that tower div uh, tub diverter and that toilet, those were the consistent, uh, like, that's what we always came across that was the, causing the most leaks on properties. Yep. And as a matter of fact, you, you know, nobody is immune to these particular leaks. I mean, even in, you know, as, as the potty princess here, I even battled some of them. And uh, most recently, uh, I was in our guest room shower and engaged the shower and it was leaking. And so I decided to pull out the flow bag on that because I'm kind of nerdy. I got to know how many gallons we're wasting. And um, <laughs> it, it is filling more than two gallons a minute uh, just coming out of that tub diverter in addition to the water that's coming out of the shower head. So I'm essentially doubling the consumption every time I turn the shower on versus if I were to take a bath. So um, I actually am, I've recorded it because um, I'm going to repair the tub diverter this evening. My husband so kindly put a mask on and stopped at Home Depot on his way home and picked up a tub diverter repair kit. So I will be putting that out on social media here uh, probably tomorrow with this is the before and this is how easy it is to fix that. And could you quickly share uh, your social media profile for us to follow? Absolutely. You can just put in hashtag the potty princess and you will get to me um, either on LinkedIn or on Facebook. Those are the two main platforms that I'm sharing educational resources at this time. Great. And for you and LinkedIn. Selma? LinkedIn. So uh, that's where I'm consistently posting content um, specific to water conservation is through LinkedIn. Uh, so just look up my name, and Selma Taurus III. I don't have any uh, fancy hashtag yet, like the potty princess, but uh, <laughs> you'll be able to find me. So. Yeah. The man who walked 30,000 yeah. yards. <laughs> you know, and, and to go along with that, one thing that I've realized, right, is I've walked 30,000 units. Is It's incredibly difficult to change human behavior, right? To ask them or to expect them to report leaks. It's much, much simpler to replace their fixtures and install ultra high efficiency fixtures to get yeah. the results that you're looking for. So if you, if you think that you're going to just send out a letter and tell everybody, hey, uh, save water, it's probably not going to drive the results you're looking for. But if you do look into installing ultra high efficiency fixtures like what we do, you're going to see the results that you want. Yeah, definitely. One one thing I can I can say to this is I've visited my uh, friend's apartment here in Denver Um C-class apartment few few years ago, it was all bills mm -hmm. paid. And when I saw that they just let the water run when they do whatever, I'm like, why are you not shutting off the water? Well, I'm not mm -hmm. paying for it. <laughs> I mean, even though the landlord, of course, want you know, send out letters and all that stuff, but th they just don't want to yep. do it. I'm like, why? I mean, I'm not paying yep. for it. They're they're not tied. Um, you know, the consumption is not tied to their wallet. So it, so it doesn't bother them. Right. And that, that's the difficult part sometimes with, you know, really changing resident behavior. Um, we see that there's a lot of uh, operators out there today 
that are also shifting towards like rubs type billing where um, the residents will share those water bills with the owner. And I think that that's a fantastic idea. Um, but I think if you're on an all bills paid property today um, to get a better reception from your current residents, if you don't have some type of water conservation program implemented already with you know updated fixtures, get that done first and then instill or implement a REBS type program because that's going that way the residents know that you as an owner are making that investment so that now that they're having to take on some of that cost of the utility, they know that they're getting the most efficient out there. Right. Cause I was going to ask you that the rough system uh, ratio utility billing system, if I were the owner, right. And I, I already have the system in place. I really don't have to do water conservation because it, it really doesn't help me much because the tenants are, are paying. But to you, what what you just explained there uh, makes perfect sense because you can sell this program as a benefit to to your mm-hmm. residents. And even even if you have rubs implemented right now, right, and you're looking at ways to help your residents minimize or lower their expenses, you should seriously consider a water conservation program like what <laughs> SAS does. And, and the reason for that is because Let's just say your property has super inefficient fixtures on that on, on your property and your competition right down the street has ultra high efficiency fixtures, right? And as a resident, if the rent is the same across both properties, but I compare the utility expense between the one I'm currently on and, and the competition, and if the competition, their utility expense is much, much lower that's attractive to me as a resident. I'm more than likely going to consider them when it comes time to renewal. So just because you have rubs implemented already, doesn't mean that there isn't an opportunity to implement water conservation through the installation of ultra high efficiency fixtures. Right. Now, we're talking to Anselmo and Kelly from SAS. You can visit their company's website at www.sasconserve.com. Um, Anselmo's email is atorres at sasconserve.com. And uh, Kelly, I don't have your email. Could you share it with the audience? It is kstinson at sasconserve.com. And Stinson is S Sierra. Tango, India, November, Sierra, Oscar, November. Correct. Thank you. All right. So let's go back to the way that your company do um, studies. And Samuel, do you have uh, some tools that you walk into a unit to to measure the flow or do you just go in uh, with your ear and, and listening for leaks? So we, we have a couple different tools. So we do have what's called a flow bag, which kind of helps you uh, just turn on the faucet and it captures all the water that comes in with a specific time frame. So that helps you kind of get an idea. But when we do our assessments, what we're capturing is the, the fixture flow rates. So if you look at a toilet, let's just say you're walking into a unit and you go to the toilet. If you take off the lid off of that toilet, there's typically a stamp on the back of that tank that will identify the year or the flow rate of that toilet. If it's not visible or if it's been completely eroded, it is more than likely a 3.5 gallon per flush toilet. Uh, mm-hmm. On a, a lot of the newer ones, you'll see, uh, you know, built that are installed after, after 1996, uh, like 1.6 gallon per flush toilet, or even like a 1.28 mm-hmm. uh, is common right now. We install a 0.8, but that's just to give you an idea of what to look for. Uh, we also mm-hmm. look at the shower heads. So as you're taking a shower tonight, look at either the neck of the shower head or inside the head of the shower head to see what is the flow rate of that shower head. So typically we see anywhere from like a 1.25 to a 2.5 to some of these rain shower heads. It's like five gallons a minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, so we document that. And then the same thing with the kitchen faucet and the bathroom faucet. So on the aerator, the little piece that uh, screws in and out of the fixture, uh, it typically has a flow rate listed on that aerator. So we identify all of that during our assessment. And that's the information that we capture. So you understand what the fixture flow rates are on your property. That way. So whenever we do put together that proposal, as Kelly mentioned, uh, it's laser focused. And then once you implement the study, do you have uh, software to track, um, you know, how many uh, gallons uh, each unit is using? So we do have a, there's a program called Leak Aware. It helps monitor the consumption, the daily consumption taking place on your multifamily property. And what that does is it's a software program. There's no uh, hardware to install. Uh, it does require somebody on site to enter in a daily meter reading. Typically we're at, for okay. it, you know, Monday through Friday or whenever your maintenance guy is walking the property. Um, it's a, it's real simple. They enter it in and then the algorithm kicks in and tells them whether or not there's high consumption taking place or if it's just normal. Uh, but what it is, is it's just a simple kind of like an insurance factor uh, to help you feel better. That way, so you know, once that bill comes 30 to 45 days later, you're not going to be surprised. Uh, you know what's going on in terms of the consumption taking place on your prop property. Okay, so so you don't have um, a hardware install where it automatically feed the data to your software. We don't, and the the way LeakAware was founded and set up, it was really designed for these you know Class C type properties where there isn't a where these owners don't have a lot of capital to invest on this equipment to put on the meters because a lot of that type of technology can be tens of thousands of dollars and even though you know you are a investor in a class c if you are a private investor and let's say you might have you know 30 or 40 passive investors in on that deal um you may not have the financial backing, right? Or the capital that some of these larger REITs have or some of these larger firms do. So this is really designed for that so that they still um, have access to this type of reporting and this type of technology without having to wait for that bill to come. Because here's what this looks like typically. And and I'm guilty of this, okay, or I have been guilty of this in the past where, you know, and we see this a lot with our electricity bills um, and our water bills. You'll get your bill at home and you're like, wow, that was like $60 higher than it was last month. That's interesting. Well, I'll just, you know, have to be a little aware about this. And then next, and you don't mm -hmm. do anything about it. You just go, oh, I'm just going to have to maybe, you know, run the dryer you know, a couple less times or something like that. And then um, and then the next month the bill comes and it's even a little bit higher than the previous month. And you're like, okay, this is my electricity bill and it's February. It's not super cold. Not sure what's going on here. This, take that type of analogy and apply that towards water. That's what happens. You get two or three months into the billing cycle or two or three months of billing cycle. And then these owners are like, wow, this really is a problem. It keeps on increasing, which means that that leak is getting worse or that there's more leaks coming online. And if you and with the leak aware, you get that real time notification that, hey, this meter that feeds these particular units, it's using more water than it should. So now you are immediately able to go into inspection mode and identify where that's at. And is this a program where we have to pay for extra? Is it a monthly subscription or yearly or is one-time fee? It is a uh, monthly subscription. So it's basically $1 per unit per month. So basically okay. $12 okay. per unit for a whole year. So it is an, it, it's a, like I said, it, it's like an insurance policy uh, for those investors, owners that want to just, especially if you're investing in class C properties, older type buildings, it's not a matter of 
uh, if there's a leak on your property, it's mostly when, 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 yeah. it's when. when there is a leak and, and how quickly you can respond to that leak, especially on, you know, properties that are built in the, you know, 60s, 70s, even the 80s. Uh, so that's where this program really is effective. Yeah. Because water is very destructive, and especially when you get into those markets like Texas, um, where it's extremely humid, you have stuff like that. You have water damage behind the walls, and then that's you know a significant risk at it converting into mold. And I can't even express to you, you know, how often we see that when we're walking properties and running due diligence. I mean, these are some of the things that we will look for. Like if, if the sink is next to the dishwasher, you know, looking mm -hmm. in between that space, um, between the, between the side of the cabinet and the dishwasher and just taking a flashlight and shining it in there and seeing if maybe some of that particle board from the cabinet is potentially water damaged those or seeing if there's mold sitting there, you're going to see that quite often. Um, or opening up the cabinets in the kitchen and looking to see, um, you know, the lower cabinets, looking to see if there's water damage. And that's the same thing, like in the bathrooms above the shower, look above the shower, you know, if you're on the first floor, because more than likely there's been a leak upstairs and it's filtered, you know, it, it's just, there's a pool sitting there. And we've, we've seen that, wasn't it? Um, wasn't sh somebody sharing with us a couple weeks ago in Summo that they were running due diligence on a property and they walked into the bathroom and this lady had an umbrella over her shower. And they asked, um, they asked the resident, because the resident was home, why do you have an umbrella over your shower? And she goes, because it's always leaking, like something's coming out of the ceiling leaking. And they were like, okay, <laughs> clearly something's occurring up there on the second floor. And she never submitted a work order. It didn't, it, she didn't think about that. She was just like, I'm going to stick an umbrella up here. <laughs> these things happen you think it's not happening it's happening <laughs> so. <laughs> oh man so i mean definitely there's a lot of uh, benefits to doing um, a study a water study like uh, you both suggested yeah. as a passive investor though what are some of the questions you should be asking your operator and see if it's even makes sense for that building to be uh, doing a water yeah, study? I get this question a lot. And I'm glad that you asked that because when um, we had partnered up with uh, a uh, apartment investor mastery group about a year ago, and we were at one of their events early uh, 2019. And, um, and, we had a lot of individuals that were coming up and asking questions and they were like, but, you know, you, you're not going to want to talk to me because I'm just a passive investor. And I'm like, no, I've, it's really important, number one, um, because later on down the road, you might not be a passive. You may decide you want to sponsor your own deal. So, you know, have the education, but also ask these questions. Um as a passive investor, if you're looking to interview your deal sponsors and you want to know that that $50,000 or that $200,000 that you're investing is going with the right deal sponsor, you need to know that they're doing their homework. What does their property improvement plan look like for that property? not just the business strategy that's in that pro forma, but do they consider water conservation? And if they do, what does that water conservation program look like and how does it impact the financials? These are some of the innovative solutions that are out there that your elite deal sponsors already know. And as soon as they are looking to pencil a deal, they're already calling us, asking us for soft numbers on that deal because they're able to make their offer more competitive. Um, but there's still a lot of owners out there that it's not correlating with them that toilets will produce cash. 
you know, all these owners are doing these beautiful upgrades in these rent or in these units so they can bump the rents upward. But they're pulling the toilets out, sitting them in the hallway, refinishing the bathtub, putting in new countertops, putting in new flooring, and then they're putting this 35 year old toilet back in the into the bathroom. And that toilet's probably leaking. That toilet could be at the flapper could be leaking a hundred gallons, if not more per day, depending on the last time it was serviced. And, and every time you flush it, it's three and a half gallons per flush. So if you have two residents in that unit and the EPA says that on average, somebody flushes a toilet, you know, three to five times a day, that's a lot of water. I mean, you know, you're talking about, you know, 20 gallons of water you know, per person per day, just on the toilets. Right. And, right. and to elaborate right. too on, you know, what things that passives should be asking operators or syndicators is you know, there's two ways to increase the asset value of a property, right? It's been really easy the last 10 years to increase rents and increase revenue through yeah. rent bumps, right? What are they doing to decrease expenses? What is, how does that look in their plan, right? Because right now, those that have a great plan on how they're reducing expenses look really good right now, especially in mm -hmm. our, our current situation. Yeah. Because it's going to be extremely challenging to get those rent bumps that they may have been, uh, you know, projecting over the next one to two years. Yeah. So ask them and look what are you doing to actually reduce the expense? If I'm going to give you my money, what are we going to do to reduce expenses as well as increase revenue? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially right now we're in self quarantine. Most people are at home more. <laughs> They're using the toilets yep. more doing their number two more. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing it more, all. more I mean, right. And just washing your hands because everybody is now practicing, which I wish we all had been doing this, you know, at the, you know, best level before, but now everybody's practicing that super, you know, hygiene of washing their hands for a minimum of 20 seconds. So, and you're doing that. You go to the mailbox, you come back in, you wash your hands. You go to the grocery store, you come back, you wash your hands. You walk the dog, you wash your hands. The the consumption that Anselmo is seeing on um, the properties that we're monitoring through Leak Aware, so we're seeing about a three to five time increase in consumption. And that's going to correlate back onto those water and sewer bills. And so for those properties that are all bills paid, um, the owners are already concerned about rent collections. Um, so they've so they have to probably dip into cash reserves for that. And then they also have to now figure out the increase in the water and sewer bill that wasn't budgeted. Um, even for those properties where the utilities are being billed back to the residents, if the residents aren't paying their rent, you better believe they're probably not going to pay their rubs bill either. And then that's going to come back on the owner. And even though a lot of cities across the country right now, um, they're not going to shut off the water. I think in Dallas, what I saw last week was they're, they're not going to, for the next six months, they're not going to do any water shutoffs. And I think that's the right thing to do. But think about this as an owner, those utility providers are going to come back when we recover, when we come out of this season, these utility providers are going to come back and look at these owners. And they're going to see who paid and who didn't. And that's going to be really important. And now is really going to be the time where those owners that have implemented the pro formas of reducing expenses and truly stress testing their investments um, are really going to come out and shine on the end of this. There's going to be some blood on the streets, unfortunately, and it's sad. But the thing that we want to share, and that's one of the things that we're so excited to be on here with you today, is that we can help bring some of that awareness and education 
and hopefully reduce some of that pain that some of these owners, that some of your listeners um, might have. Or even if there's passive passives listening today, taking that back to their, their deal sponsors and going, hey, you know, I listened to this, this podcast and I heard this information. What, what are you guys doing right now um, to make sure that there aren't leaks on the property while everybody's quarantined? Yeah, that's our mission. Right, Kelly. I mean, we're trying to make water conservation sexy again. Right? <laughs> we're, we're, oh. we're, we're bringing sexy back in toilets. <laughs> no, th- this is great because as, as I'm listening to you two, I mean, I'm thinking about my situation w- with my building. I'm like, yeah, I'm three years in. I'm a passive on this building, and I don't think we've done any. So. Um, yeah, I'll be reaching out to the operator and um, you know real soon and, and see what we are doing over there. Um, so back to back to SAS. What um, I know you guys are nationwide, but what um, what's the minimum unit size that you guys will work with? So we have crews that travel all across the country, um, and there's a lot of costs associated with that. And we ask, we will consult with anybody. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, two units or, you know, 2000 units, we will consult with you. But to mobilize our crews out there, we are requesting about um, 50 to 75 bathrooms. And um, ideally, 100 bathrooms is is great um, to start. Now, if it's below that, you still want to reach out to us because we may be able to piggyback that property off of another install in the area, or we might have some recommendations where we can help you get the product and help you with, you know, a local engagement out there. But regardless, as far as um, evaluating the property and everything, reach out to us. That's our way of giving back in the community. We don't charge for, you know, these uh, consultations over the phone through email. We'll do what we call preliminary analysis. So we'll, we love that. That's what we want to do day in, day out. And, you know, and then have that pull through where we can put our crews out there where it makes sense. Does your fee change based on the market? That is also an excellent question. So we keep it very simple. Um, Our installation fee is um, a flat fee and it doesn't matter where in the country it is. Where there could be variables um, would be like if you get into the Northeast, especially like Massachusetts, where permits are required. Mm -hmm. Permits would be Mm -hmm. an additional cost to our, our per bathroom fee. Um, and then also like if we aren't able to put a dumpster on the property or drop the trailer with the product on the property because there's space constraints, if we have to store that off site and then shuttle it onto the property, there would be an additional charge for that. But we discuss all of those things up front. There is not one property that is cookie cutter to the next. They all have their unique setup their unique challenges. And, and we do so much due diligence on the front side that once our crews get out there on site, we're able to knock out about 50 to 60 bathrooms a day. And that's why our owners are able to start to benefit from those savings within the first 30 days of the installation being completed. Got it. Now for uh, Anselma, what market do you personally walk the properties? Oh, wow. So I've been all over. Uh, The concentration of those properties was mostly in uh, Texas and Oklahoma, but I've been on properties all throughout the Southeast in California, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado. I've I've pretty much uh, been all over the place. Uh, Been to all 50 states? No, not yet. Uh, You know, thankfully, thankfully not. (laughs) It's it's we so typically when we do our assessment, we're not we're going through about anywhere from a hundred to one hundred and twenty five units a day, right? So we're in there capturing the information we need, and then we're getting out of the unit as quickly as possible. So we move pretty quickly Mm -hmm. to do that assessment to capture the information we need, but it it is a lot of work, and especially if you have a lot of stairs on your property. 
or uh, you know the buildings are spread out. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, it's a lot of work, but it's yeah. Fun. And and especially if it's like Dallas in August or Oklahoma in August. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, yep. Oh, and I think, you know, one of the very first, uh, one of the very first assessments that I did was actually in Cleveland, Ohio. And I, uh, I think it was like a couple months in of partnering with SAS and Um, I had been traveling like that previous two weeks and I came home, I had less than 24 hours to empty my bag, um, repack it, hop on a plane, ended up landing in Ohio. I had some other client meetings. I got up that next morning and went to go uh, finish, uh, get my shoes on to go to this water assessment before this meeting, realized that I left my, my boots at home and only had high heels that were for my, um, for my corporate meeting later on that day. So, oh um, didn't have any time to stop anywhere to, you know, get shoes. It was all right. We're, we're in a snowstorm in the middle of January in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I'm going to do a water assessment on this property that was built in 1910. And I've never met this owner before. And so I show up and he's like, we're really going to do, we're really going to do this in heels. And I go, all I have to say is that, yes, we are. And if I slip on the sidewalk, when we're walking between buildings, please get it on video because this will be the best day of your life. And to this day, we still laugh about that. He's still a client. It's, it's a big joke, but, um, but it is, it's an interesting adventure that we're on. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. So good stuff. <laughs> I, I I love to hear more stories from people <laughs> like, because you know you walk properties all over the place, and you know those stories are great. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you mentioned uh, you see everything, right? And there are times where I literally take off my clothes as soon as I leave <laughs> that property. Just <laughs> my bag because I fear that there's some type of con- contamination on it. Yeah. That I need to get rid of as soon as possible. <laughs> yes. I mean, especially now. I I hope you guys are not doing any water study right we now. We are not, and I'm glad that you brought that up because um, we are considered essential, um, but uh, because we're in the plumbing business, but. Uh, We don't want to be part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. Um, So uh, it's really important for us to protect our crews. And it's really important for us to protect our clients' residents. So um, we are not doing any work in the field right now. We are tentatively scheduling things for May. But we we expect that that may also Uh, adjust because things are changing every day. We also think that there's going to be certain areas of the country that will probably lift restrictions before others. We are putting into place new uh, PPE protocols, so personal protective equipment protocols, so that we protect our employees, our crews that are out there, but also so that we're giving those residents a peace of mind that when these installations and assessments do resume, do resume, that hopefully they'll have a bit of a reduced, you know, fear when we enter their unit. Because if I lived in an apartment right now and I had a construction crew show up at my door to install a new toilet, I, I would decline entry. I absolutely would decline entry right now. And um, I just don't think that that's the right thing to do. So the best thing that we can advise to our owners right now is to educate their residents to report water leaks and and to use this time to analyze the property so that when these restrictions are lifted, um, put a plan in place to reduce the expenses. Kelly, you mentioned too, you know, just educating your residents. So I know a lot of Owners, property management companies are educating their residents about some of the resources out there for rent, you know, helping out with rent or utility expenses or even food. Uh, You know, even a a simple letter to your residents about, hey, water, consider water conservation or energy conservation and and a couple quick tips on, you know, things to turn off the water uh, Mm -hmm. when you're not brushing your teeth or, 
you know, some of the simple things uh, just through a letter, sending it out to your residents. You know, if they turn in those uh, work orders and get them fixed and it'll help out in the long run. That's a that's a great tip. I'm going to be adding that to my letter. I, I need to send that out soon. Uh, I've been a little bit behind just trying to learn everything I could about all the resources out yeah. there. <laughs> you and everybody else. <laughs> first of all, everybody had to become like a Zoom expert and a, a virtual expert <laughs> overnight, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right? So I think now most of us are, you know, getting over that. We're, we're handling that now. It's just absorbing as much information as we can right now. Definitely, definitely. Now let, let's transition over to the. Uh, we we'll talk a little bit uh, about the fixture, right? So I, I want to get your insights on on this. When you are using low flow toilets, right? Your company, I understand, uh, partner with uh, Niagara Conservations, and let's say my building has like old pipes, orange bird pipes. What effects will it have? Uh, on those pipes, you know, if I haven't replaced them and now we're putting in low flow toilets? That is a great question. So I have seen over the last couple of months, I've seen a couple different publications circulate out there talking about low flow toilets and the negative consequences to the sewer lines on aging properties. Um, So this is where it's really important. Um, for owners to understand that not all toilets are created equal. It's kind of the same thing. I think I used this analogy the other day. It's the same thing as toilet paper. Um, Not all toilet paper is created equal. So um, there's a couple of things. First of all, when we come out, we do a water assessment. We are asking those questions. Uh, What type of plumbing is is on the property? What's that infrastructure look like? Is it cast iron? Um, if it is it CPVC, uh, and those, depending on the answers to those questions, are going to determine if we're going to do some additional investigation, or if we're going to recommend sampling product out there first, or if we're going to recommend higher flow rates than what we initially would propose. We're also looking for. Uh, like if you're on an older property and you have a lot of vegetation up around the buildings, how long has that vegetation been there? Is the owner having his maintenance on site having to jet those lines on a consistent basis? Are they having to jet the lines because there's roots growing through the sewer? So these are things that we ask. And even if you do have, you know, old plumbing, cast iron plumbing, um, and you're able to pass, you know, on our assessment, then the toilets that we uh, install are Niagara. They're manufactured by Niagara Conservation. They're the most efficient on the market today. But what's really great about them is that Niagara actually re-engineered the toilet. So while some of our other manufacturers out there have, you know, redesigned the look of the toilet, and it's using less water because it has a smaller tank, it, the technology in it hasn't changed. So instead of using three and a half gallons per flush to push the waste, now they're using 1.28 gallons per flush to push the same amount of waste, but no added technology. Niagara, however, created a patented technology where between the tank and bowl, there is what you call an air transfer tube. And that air transfer tube creates an air pocket between the flushes. And so it's like a pressurized pocket. And when you release that flush, it's releasing that air pocket and it's essentially siphoning the waste out of the bowl. Like the, it would be similar to the force of an airplane toilet. But because all Mm -hmm. of that flushing is occurring under the water, it's super quiet. So Niagara calls this the stealth technology. Um, And that's why it's called stealth, because it's super powerful, but it's really quiet. And then there's no flapper in the toilet. So um, that's a great benefit for owners because you have reduced work orders. You don't have those running toilets. These toilets are virtually maintenance free um, because there is no flapper that will be corroded over time that will be creating those leaks. 
could you share what's the cost per unit to install one of these low flow ADA compliance toilets in? Sure. On average, um, and I think I had shared this a little bit uh, earlier, that provided, you know, we don't have to pull permits, provided we can put a trailer and a dumpster on the property, you're going to be budgeting about $275 per bathroom. And that $275 includes all of the material, all of the labor, includes all of the full assessment with that front of the wall leak report, and then also includes that post install analysis because we follow these projects after installation to ensure that, you know, and to benchmark that those reductions are being achieved. Because what happens a lot of times is you get like six to 12 months after a project like this and owners sometimes I won't say all the time, but sometimes they could come, become complacent and they'll forget about the urgency of keeping up with potential leaks that could happen because that tub diverter may not, that tub diverter may not have been leaking when we did the water conservation upgrade, but eight months down the road, now all of a sudden that tub diverter is leaking. So we like to keep that awareness up front and look for some of those anomalies. And do they have any kind of warranty with, with these uh, toilets? They do. Um, so our labor, so we warranty both sides. So we will uh, labor the warranty or we will, sorry, we'll warranty the labor. The labor is warrantied for 90 days. And then the product itself is warrantied for 15 years. So the components inside the Niagara toilets have a 15 year warranty. So if for some reason something happened, you would just call us and we'll send out the replacement part. Um, and then the Vitreous China is, uh, is on a lifetime warranty. So um, best Niagara has the best warranty of any toilet manufacturer out there on the market today. Awesome. You guys have been great. I've learned so much in the last hour <laughs> just sitting here. Good. This, this is Good. Great. I'm sure that now every time you go stay at a hotel or you go over to a friend's house, you're, you're literally going to flip the lid. You're going to look at a toilet differently now that you've had this education today. <laughs> and I hope your listeners yeah. do as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because I mean, I used to just flip it up because I, I saw it as the imprint, but I didn't know what they yeah. meant. I'm just like, yeah, it's just some numbers. I have just random numbers. Um, so yeah, definitely learned a lot today. You guys have been awesome. Um, now I have just one last question for each of you uh, before I let you go. What's the first activity that Team Taurus and Team Potty Princess will do with your family when social distancing is no longer a requirement? <laughs> that is a fantastic question. Um, as a family, we will be on the volleyball court. First thing, my uh, I come from a volleyball family. My girls play volleyball competitively. And um, we don't know what to do with ourselves right now because the evenings and the weekends were always consumed through volleyball and um, the courts are shut down. So that is our number one. Uh, we will be on the court as soon as soon as they open it up. You, you can play out the park though, right? 2v2? No, it is shut down for us. Oh, yeah. wow. That's a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will. About I will, uh, we will be going to San Diego, California as quickly as we can. Uh, we were supposed to go there for spring break and we had to cancel that at the last minute and they were not happy about that. And so we will go there as quickly as possible. So a nice vacation. Uh, and then uh, like going back to all the sports activities, just getting back yeah. up there playing soccer and baseball. So. Uh, yeah, I just wish that, you know, we could still go to the NFL I games. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's hope that everybody gets into spring training, that we're ready to go here soon. It's uh, College ball is about to be around the corner, so I'm a little worried. 
that too yeah i mean sat uh saturday and sunday yeah. i mean i don't have anything to do now i mean there's nothing going on <laughs> so your tupperware cabinet should be very well organized and not us and not a speck of dust on your baseboards right <laughs> yeah right <laughs> no well awesome well go ahead well, what I was were gonna you say, say no it's not all organized yeah no it's, we've been doing no, I see that you you uh, you drive your ATV all around. You have a, a lot of oh, fun. Oh yeah, we uh, I mean, we try to get out and enjoy nature as much as we can, and it's even easier now, obviously, because uh, it is technically social distancing, right? I mean, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, that, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh man, I envy you guys. I haven't been out of the house for a month <laughs> now. I mean, I'm walking around, but that that's yeah. about it. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for your time and someone, Kelly. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. That's the end of the show. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a five stars rating and review on iTunes for the Real Estate Lab podcast. Until next time, have a prolific week.